So you have some machines sitting idle and a company comes and approaches you about renting out that machine time and leasing out that space from your shop. Is it a good idea? Hard to say. What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Lakewood Machine and Tool back here again for Practical Machinist. And on this episode of Machine Shop Talk, we're gonna be trying to answer exactly that question. But before we do, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Let's get into it. started here for this week's episode of Machine Shop Talk, we would like to put out a call for shop tour videos. We with Practical Machinists have had the pleasure of getting to go inside dozens of some of the most incredible small and large machine shops out there across North America and even some you know in Europe and South America. And this is an awesome way to get your shop featured, um, you know, to help show off what you're doing in your shop, show off you know your story, show off your capabilities. And most importantly, guys, this is absolutely free. If you're interested in shooting one of these for us, please send an email to info at practicalmachinist.com. This does not need to be some kind of huge production. Guys, I shot my shop tour on my iPhone. You can do that as well. So if you're interested, please get in touch at info at practicalmachinist.com. Let's get into this week's episode. So today on Shop Talk, we are diving back into the Practical Machinist forums. Uh, this was in the shop management and ownership forums. It's one of my favorite places to go. Great conversations there all the time. And I found a question there that I found intriguing. Um, my answer towards it was definitely a little more straightforward than usual, but I did find it to be a very interesting situation. So I thought it was worth bringing to you guys and seeing what you think. So a guy came on with a bit of a situation that I've heard of before, but haven't really seen a conversation about. So what he had going on is he, it sounds like owns a machine shop. Um, sounds like he has pretty good capacity, you know, a decent amount of machines, guys, and space. And I don't know how this secondary company found him, but essentially they approached him and said, hey, listen, you have some machine time. What we would like to do is we would like to bring in our own machinists essentially lease your space, rent your machines, and make our own parts. So essentially they would like to set up a shop within his shop where they would make their own parts on his machines in his space. And I assume the deal would be some kind of, you know, lease or rental agreement. He did say that his first reaction was absolutely not. I'm gonna get that out of the way right now. Um, he said, nope, but he did kind of think about it enough that he wanted to come on and just kind of see what other people would think with this. Um, from the way it was described, this was not some kind of fly-by-night operation, you know, some random person emailing him on the internet with some stupid idea. Like, it sounded like this was a fairly decent company that was proposing this. So it intrigued him enough, even though he was still saying no, that he wanted to come on and see if anybody else had this kind of scenario either happen, work out, not work out, and so forth. The reactions that he got there were pretty much the exact same that I had. Like I said, this was kind of a straightforward one in my head, but I did think it was worth getting into because situations like this do happen. Um, there were people on there that shared some of their a little more painful stories in dealing with this. So it's always worth sharing some of these, even if it sounds straightforward, because you know if people are kind enough to share their misfortunes and their mistakes, Hopefully it can keep you and others out of that same situation because they were nice enough to share it. So you don't need to make that same mistake yourself. So the first issue that people pointed out there was the machines. Um, you know, guys, straight off the bat, I do not like buying used machinery. You know, we don't buy used machinery if we can help it. Can't always avoid it. The budget's not always there. But with machine tools like these, you know, CNC lathes, mills, Swiss turning, whatever it may be, you never really can tell how other people have treated them. And sometimes when you bring them in, it can take quite a while of running them to really figure out if there's an issue with it and then you're stuck with it. Um, you know, if that happens, it may not even be fixable. To guys newer in the trade, I'm gonna say it very plainly, yes, 
there are ways that you can run a machine that will make them stay accurate longer, improve the life of machine, um, be safer. And yes, there are ways you can run a machine and things you can do to a machine that will make it never accurate ever again, or that will make it essentially turn it into a money pit. And you can do that just by the way you run the machine. Or one really bad day, if you crash that spindle hard enough into that table, you may have just created a very expensive piece of scrap metal. So when other people are running your machines, you have to consider this. Um, these machines are not bulletproof. Think of it like renting a car. If I go and rent a car, you know, I'm a, I like to consider myself a fairly reasonable person, but let's pretend I'm not. It's not my car. It's not my paint. It's not my engine. So, you know, I'm probably gonna be a little less careful if it's someone else's car rather than my car. Now imagine, imagine you had a very long-term rental car and you were also responsible for doing the maintenance on it, you know, changing the oil, checking the air pressure in the tires. If it's not my car, I'm probably gonna be less likely to spend exactly what it needs and probably just enough to get me by. Or I may neglect the maintenance altogether if I'm someone who just doesn't care. It's the exact same way when it comes to someone coming in to rent your machines, essentially. You gotta remember, these people that they're supplying, they're not on your payroll. You did not hire them. And because of that, you didn't get a chance to go through and vet them. You know, part of when you hire somebody, you wanna to talk to them, you wanna find out, hey, are you a conscientious person? Are you going to care about my stuff the way that you, that, or sorry, you're gonna care about my stuff the way that I do? And if not, are you at least going to care? You know, I don't think you can expect anybody to care as much as the guy who owns the machine, but at least are you going to be a conscientious person? If someone else is bringing those people in, you have no idea who they are. And while we all like to think again that we're dealing with rational thinking people who are, you know, not terrible people, at the end of the day, people are people. Some are gonna care a lot, some people are not gonna care at all. And if you do not have a chance to vet them, you're essentially giving them free reign on your machines and you are going to be there for whatever happens to them. And there kind of lies the problem. I don't know if any, any of you people out there have seen this, but I've seen this many, many times where we all know that guy, and he's the guy who will crash apart and say, oh, it was a machine glitch. In 13 years of working in this trade, 14 years, I don't even know what I'm at right now, I have seen maybe two actual machine glitches in my life, where I'm like, yep, that machine did something weird, and it wasn't supposed to, maybe two. With the way some guys talk in the trade, there's a, you know people who won't take responsibility for what they're doing. You would think these kind of glitches happen every single day. So let's say something goes wrong in your machine. They crash it, great, you go to the company and say, hey listen, you know your guy crashed the machine, he needs to fix it. You're dealing with a guy who says, it was a machine glitch. Now of course, this is a bit of a random situation there, but now who pays? Do I pay to fix my machine? How can I prove that it wasn't a machine glitch? How can I prove that guy was actually being neglectful in what he did? Mistakes happen. So now if my machine gets broken, who's paying for it? When you're dealing with money, people get weird. You can't assume people are going to be rational, so just right off the bat, that's something I would be looking out for. The next point that crossed my mind was liability. And this is something other guys in there said too. I think this is something that people can be a bit too lax with when it comes to running their businesses in general. Um, it's got the potential to create massive problems if you're not very, very careful. So aside the, from the potential scenario where someone crashes a machine and you know the machine gets damaged, let's go to an even worse scenario. What if somebody gets hurt? You know, profits are great. Let's all you know respect our businesses, but at the end of the day. People getting hurt is way worse than losing profit. So what if that scenario happens and that guy doesn't work at your shop? I like to think that all of us out there have safety protocols in place. You know, we wanna make sure people are wearing safety glasses, um, that they're locking out the machines when they're doing certain things, that they're, you know, all the things that go into being safe when working. If these people who are in your shop do not work for you, do you have the authority to make sure they are working safely? do you have the responsibility to make sure they're working safely? You know, you may have the authority to tell them to put on safety glasses, but is it also your fault now if they're not wearing safety glasses and look, look, God forbid, they get something in the eye. 
Do you even want the responsibility to babysit people that you didn't hire to make sure they're not hurting themselves and that they're working safely? And if something goes wrong, whose insurance is it? You know, again, not to put profits over people. People are most important. But if someone gets hurt in your shop, typically it's your insurance that covers it. You are paying for it. That is part of what owning a shop is. That's part of what running a shop is. You accept that liability, that if someone gets hurt in my facility, I am going to pay to make sure they are taken care of. What if that person doesn't work for you? What if that person is leasing space? Do you have some kind of agreement? It's, again, I, I really struggle with this one because it's not profits over people, but at the end of the day, someone making a mistake in your shop that doesn't work for you could bankrupt your shop or potentially change their life because of something that happened in your shop. It's, it's a scenario that you need to be extremely careful with. To kind of build on that little story that happened here recently, we had a new neighbor in our industrial park and we always like to help out our neighbors here, you know, as much as we can. I don't really know these people. They seem nice, but I've never worked with them. I don't know anybody specifically that works there. I don't even know any of their names. And they had a new Swiss lathe coming in, little Swiss lathe. And I guess they came and talked to my guys on the floor and said, hey, listen, uh, we don't have a forklift. When this Swiss lathe shows up on a truck, can you forklift it off for us? And my guys, you know, they're helpful guys, they're nice guys. They said, yeah, sure, of course we can do that. And I got wind of it. So I went over and talked to them and I said, hey, listen, first of all, why is this not coming with a forklift if you guys don't have a forklift? Um, you know, what's the FOB point on this lathe? Is it your door? Is it their plant? Essentially, if something happens when this lathe is getting unloaded, who's responsible for it? Also, how much does this lathe weigh? I don't have a very big forklift. When we move our big machines around, we need to get you know the big forklifts in. They couldn't really tell me anything, so I had to tell them, listen, I don't wanna be your first choice on this. See what you guys can do. If you get in a bind, let me know, but I'd really be more comfortable if you guys figured this out. The lathe showed up, little Swiss turning lathe. They, it came with a forklift, so we didn't need to do anything. And as they were trying to unload it, they almost dropped it twice. That is a $250,000 lathe that they almost dropped twice. And actually I looked at it, I don't even know if our forklift could have lifted it properly. We could have gotten it off and immediately it could have gone on its side. The point is, it's very easy to open yourself up to liability, even outside of the medical or safety end of things, that you just don't need to open yourself up to. Because if that thing went down, again, we like to think we're dealing with rational, normal people. If it's their money on the line and it's $250,000, yeah, they might come after me for that. And I don't need that and they don't need that. So always be very, very careful when talking about liability. Help people out when you can, but be careful. The last point that made a lot of sense to me and I heard it about five times in this thread and it was my first reaction, was why would you do this when it comes to leasing out machine time and machine space? You are a machine shop. Your whole, whole business is essentially renting out your time, your machines, your tooling to other companies to do work on your schedule that also fits theirs. I don't see a scenario that makes any sense where a company could come in, rent my machines, take my capacity, do work for themselves at a price that's probably lower than I could do it, where I would make more money and be in a better situation than if I just did the work. That whole scenario doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, if you were really dead and you just wanted to tie up two machines that you had to pay off, that's the only scenario I could see. But even then, why would you not quote out the work, do the work for your shop rate, and then keep control of your machines, keep control of your liability, um, you know, make sure nobody's damaging your machines. I don't understand a scenario where this makes more sense for the person leasing out the space than the person leasing the space. For the person leasing the space, this sounds like a great deal. <laughs> if you can find somebody to do it, you know, I, I think it's a fantastic deal. But from the perspective of the guy who owns the shop, I just don't understand why this would be a advantageous situation. So in the comments below, guys, I would like to know if you've ever seen a deal like this, have you ever seen it work? Would you ever consider it? Um, it was very, 
foreign to me. You know, I've heard of this before, but again, trying to figure out why people would do it, I couldn't figure it out. So if you know, please let us know in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. As always, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss, miss a video. You take care.